uh, and then uh, take and keep the same pricing. I don't know. I'm just, this is an idea because you're going to be playing around with these and you still won't know what the numbers are. My brother-in-law in Denver has a magnetic thing on his windshield and he uses the tollway and they have very, you know, they, they charge him more to drive during the commuter hours and less when he drives right. in the off hours. <laughs> but we're not quite that sophisticated yeah. yet. <laughs> However, we've looked into certain things like that, yeah. but, you know, the price range is, I'm thinking, one to $400,000 for mm -hmm. options like that. Uh, right. Council Member Weimer. Yeah, I've been going down the same road with the peak time because if you just crunch the numbers, the ferry's only half full average overall. So if you could put more cars during when it's not being used by offering discounts, you could. The problem is they only collect money one way. So there's a peak coming off the island, but we, there's no way to capture that because they don't collect any fares for, for that peak unless we change the way we collect fares. So if they came off the island non-peak and came back during peak, it still doesn't help. Get hit, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So right. you'd have to do the surcharge or something both directions. Or right. so yeah. what if we charge the surcharge just at the peak times? It would only cover hit the people going there in the evening. No, both times. If they take the peak time, they wouldn't be. If they come out in the morning during the peak, they don't go back until later in the day. They're not going to hit get hit for their morning commute. Is what Councilmember Weimer said. Well, that's why I'm saying you'd charge just a surcharge at peak time both ways. Oh, both ways. Mm -hmm. Could we collect a surcharge, or is that going to create such a hassle because you're trying to get everybody on, get them off? Right. Generally, as you're loading and coming back, uh, the bulk of the duties there are actually selling tickets and things like that. Going over is where you're you're collecting the fares and and things like that for the ride. Coming back is when they sell tickets. That's where people are writing their checks to buy tickets and things like you that. You mean the multi ride? Right. I see. So the you know. Uh, so there are other duties that they're performing, but yeah, it, I mean, could it be done? Well, I suppose it could be done, uh, but you're you're talking about. I'm concerned about managing too much cash out there, but uh, we can make it work. We'll have to if that's if that's the the desire to give it a shot. Sounds like so you're talking about collecting a surcharge as they leave the island during certain periods and then collecting a surcharge when as they, they go to the island during certain periods. Right. And you're talking about a dollar, two dollars. I mean, it, uh, you'd only have a certain period, then you could get rid of the cash. Okay. But uh, there's a motion on the floor, and I was sure. just throwing that out as another option if this doesn't go. Right. The motion is to increase uh, item 1 to $6, item 9 to $6, and item 14 to reduce to 237 Any other questions or discussion on the motion? Should we wait till Councilmember Knudsen's back? Or? <laughs> <laughs> you can wait for me. Well, you weren't going to vote for the we last one. A no vote on this Your council vote doesn't, matter. doesn't matter. The only thing that matters are yes votes because that's the only enough. way you get business done. Well, so. let me make a comment then. Um, I'm not supporting this new motion anyway, so I'm not sure. But you never know. I'm going to support this motion because I think it's, it's reasonable and fair. And again, I'm supporting it on the idea that it's interim and that this demand pricing structure and the whole comprehensive package that I just think we need to look at. Everything's interim. You have to look at it every year. Really? I did not know that. Well, so there's some things we look at, technically look at every year and, you know, rubber stamp it. But th this, we need a whole wholesale, I think, look at, you know, the parking, the ferry replacement, ticket prices. We got the contract negotiation going on with the Lummi Nation. Will that be after the 23rd? Yes, okay. you're, you're safe. <laughs> You'll be able to go out to Lummi Island for the rest of your life uh, without fear. So I, I'm going to support this. It just, it, I think in, in just as a, it's what we need to do right now to preserve our, our fun and with the idea that we are going to take a look at a lot of these great options that we've had from the Lummi Island community as we've been wrestling with this issue. Okay. Somebody want to yell at me? Uh, Knudsen, get in here. Coffee breaks over. Can we hear from the audience during this meeting, or do we not generally do that? We could. Uh, we have uh, about 20 minutes more. 
Did you want to hear from them before we take this vote? Well, I'm just wondering if there is a Another where people are with it. It's very strange for me to be setting rates for people that <clears throat> in a place that I don't live. And I'm just wondering, I want to make sure that at least the people that showed up today have got some interest in this. Is this, is this a direction? Does anybody want to speak? Oh, yeah, they all want to speak. There's no question about that. Oh, well, the, the question is, uh, with 20 minutes left and, and uh, we've got a vote before us, did you want to do that before uh, we actually do this vote? And if we do so, we're going to have to limit it to about 10 minutes, and that will be challenging. Well, I don't see anybody jumping up. Does anybody want to oh, speak to me. this? Oh, trust me. Trust me. The, the question is, well, is that what you want to do? Have about 10 minutes now. of public yes, testimony? Yes, that is. Okay. All right, we're going to have about 10 minutes of public testimony. I'd like you to limit your comments to about a minute, because I know a lot of you would like to speak. Mr. Kinney, come on down. Identify yourself, name, and address. Keep in mind, this is not a public hearing. We're going to do this very informally. Uh, but uh, if you've got something to say, go ahead and say it. Uh, Fred Kinney, 4164 Lego Bay Road, yeah. Lummi Island. Um, I, I guess, given the confusion here, I'd still urge the uh, $2 surcharge as an interim thing, perhaps with a three-month, maybe a six-month uh, uh, sunset clause. That will do a lot to stop any increase in the deficit. I also want to point out that there's a issue on whether the uh, motor vehicle fuel tax that's attributable to the ferry is being uh, put into the fund. That's over $400,000 that would reduce the deficit. And it was last uh, 2009, that was $140,000 by itself. That would reduce your target from a uh, million five thirty by about two hundred thousand bucks. Could you, and, and that's a significant item. Okay, thank you. Could you respond to that, Mr. Abart? Sure. Currently, there is a ferry deficit fund. Uh, that that money is specifically designated for that. It's uh, separated out. It's a separate check, and it is essentially deposited, and we use it uh, as per the ordinance. Uh, what Fred is referring to is a completely different issue, actually, and it's it's sort of a, a part of a part of a part of a formula, and Fred and I just disagree on that at this point. You know, we've we've had our legal counsel review this and other staff and finance, and uh, I'm we're, I'm sure we're not done talking about it. Uh, and I respect Fred, and Fred respects me. We just don't agree yet right. on this. <laughs> All right. And who's okay? Anything else, Fred? We're yeah. gonna. There's gonna be a bunch of folks yeah, who want to speak. I, I just I just want to point out one thing: the state specifically identifies to the county that that money is attributable to the ferry. It's calculated in what he calls the uh, the deficit or what is called the deficit reimbursement fund. It's by the state defined as ferry revenue. It's included as revenue in that calculation. And there's a whole lot of other things I could go into that I don't want to take time now. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mark Sexton, 1253 Jameson Street, Lummi Island. Um, I would ask the council to consider the fact that uh, this ferry is operated very differently than a business and that it needs to be approached from a more business-like point of view to look at how you can possibly maximize revenues and then figure out how to match the service to those revenues that are available. You know, in small business or in any other business, that's how we work, is you figure out how to make the most money and then match the service to that, as opposed to this system that we have right now where we're working backwards and trying to match revenues that may not be available. So, and I'm not in favor of service cuts, but I think there are a lot of options available. But some of the, the plans that have been suggested here are going to reach draconian uh, income losses, and I'm really concerned about that without some serious consideration. So I, 